Hi, welcome to Fox Valley Today. I'm Barb Nadeau. Today we've got a really sweet story, uh, something that's near and dear to my heart. I think it's going to be near and dear to many of your hearts. We're talking today with rep a representative of Passages Hospice and also some members of the faculty of West River High School and some students who all got involved together in, in helping people in need. And I'm very happy to have them all with me. Uh, in our studio audience today, we've got Caitlin Henderson. I want to thank her for setting this up. She She's a uh, com communications manager for Passages Hospice. And also waiting in the wings, we have two students from West Aurora High School, two seniors, Kirsten Berggren and Erin Kennedy. But now in the first half of our show, I want to introduce you to Nicole Brokaw. Nicole, you are the Volunteer Service Information Coordinator. That's, that's a mouthful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. And of course, that's for Passages Hospice. Yes, that's correct. Uh, tell me a little bit about Passages Hospice, if you would. Um, where are you located? We are located out of Lyle and then we are also located out of Rockford, Illinois. We have other um, regional offices as well in Bloomington and Swansea, Illinois, but um, our patients are statewide. Okay, I want to ask you a little bit more during the show about why someone as, as young um, as you got involved in hospice. What it was that drove you to hospice as a career? And um, so save that for a minute okay. because we want to say hello to Sydney and Ryan. Sydney Newkirch mm -hmm. and Ryan Sladek. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, Barb. Uh, Sydney, you are. A st uh, I wanted to make you a student. I wanted to make both of you students <laughs> at West Aurora High School, but both of you are members of the faculty. Tell yes. me a little bit about your, uh, your career as a teacher. This is, um, we both actually just finished our fourth year at West Aurora High School, and we both coach at the high school too. Um, this was my first year teaching sociology, which is the class that we did the service learning project with. Um, and Ryan has been teaching it for a couple of years. Yeah, I took over about uh, two and a half years ago. And uh, we kind of revamped the curriculum, revamped the class, and we got so many kids that wanted to take the class that we needed another teacher here. So we got, uh, I think next year we'll have five sections of sociology. So it's about uh, 150 students will be going through that class. So wonderful. Yeah, and and I took sociology in college. Okay, mm -hmm. um, that was my minor, so that's why I kind of had. Okay, to okay, in. so. With a minor in sociology, obviously you, you care about people, but you wanted to you wanted to teach. You didn't want to be a social worker. Absolutely. Actually, my first choice was to be a social worker, um, and I just found more job opportunities with the uh, teaching degree and kind of just more opportunities to work with uh, adolescents, which is kind of my primary focus. So, mm -hmm. what are the things that you focus on in the sociology class? We um, it's pretty extensive because we've been lucky enough to have this extended to a full year. Mm -hmm. So we talk about. Um, we talk about research methods, how we learn about the social world, we talk about culture, we talk about socialization and how you learn to live in the world, um, we talk about family and groups, we talk about social inequalities, which is where a lot of what we talk about in class was real to them doing the service learning project. Um, what do you Basically anything and anything, everything that happens. <laughs> oh, and I could see with a global awareness yes, getting bigger absolutely. and bigger and bigger, um, your ideas of and your and, and your teaching of of awareness and and respect. Yes. yes. And different perspectives on how you should view people would, and human behavior. So really, be yeah. an intriguing class. I love it. Yeah. We love it, yeah. and we hope they love it too. Well, you know, I didn't really like sociology, but I think <laughs> if I had you two for teachers, I think I might like it a lot better. <laughs> it sounds like a great class. Yeah, I love teaching it. Yeah. So, how did you get connected to hospice? Uh, we actually, um, we decided this past semester that we were going to implement a community service project um, for the first time. We got an idea from, we are both part of a conference called uh, CAST, which is Chicago Area Sociology Teachers. And uh, it's a bunch of teachers that get together and kind of uh, help each other out, providing resources and lots of plans for each other, whatever works. And we go to this conference every year and we saw a lot of people did this community service project where they would uh, require the students to have volunteer hours in the local community. So we decided to give it a shot, and the uh, first time we tried it was this past semester, and we kind of put together a list of opportunities for the kids to get involved, and uh, a lot of them decided to choose uh, passages. That was kind of one of our really? top choices. We're, so. we're really impressed when we had yeah. the number of kids that we did choosing to work with, has, um, with passages. I thought that was going to be something that would be tough for you know, a 16, 17, 18-year-old yeah. high school student to work with and they've done such a great job at it. You know, it was a name on a list and they wanted to go for it and they've been outstanding. Yeah, they really have. That's, that's something, well what is it that brings people to hospice? 
You know, I really, it depends. I think a lot of times we have people who just have large hearts and they really just want to make a difference in the lives of others. And then I think people who have had experiences with, you know, maybe family members or someone mm -hmm. that was close to them that went through hospice. What brought you to Passages? Um, you know, I actually went to school to be um, a social worker. And as I got out of school, um, my grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And um, I went through the hospice, um, you know, experience. Timeline there, yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, it just kind of fell in my lap, you know, at the same time that I was going through that. And I just decided this is something that I really wanted to be a part of. So. Well, that is fantastic. It, it really is. And you would think that kids would shy away yeah. because going into a nursing home environment, you don't know what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of things that are really disconcerting, uh, a lot of images that are really, you know, hard to bear. And, and those patients are not necessarily always happy. <laughs> or happy to see you um, and and they're going through a lot and then there's other patients that are also going through a lot if you're in a nursing home you can see a variety of experiences human experiences happening all around a dining room or a, or a hallway or a, you know and I would think that would be really tough for students to jump into and to want to be part of but you didn't find that they, they didn't shy away they didn't seem to be scared they didn't seem to be nervous and they were ready to go um, I was like, you know, can you talk to us about anything? Go ahead. And they've just, they've been champions about it. You know, they really have. Um, I think, like Nicole was saying, they're kids with really big hearts. They are very good people, and they love to contribute, and, yeah, they were great. Were you surprised when they showed up and, and said, or called you on the phone and said, we want to get involved? How did that happen? Um, you know, it really... You know, I got a bunch of phone calls that day. I definitely had a lot of people that were interested in um, volunteering from Aurora High School. Um, but, you know, it's not really a surprise. We have a lot of um, students that come in that are younger that are interested in doing this. Um, so, it, you know, having them call and wanting to meet to do some training and to answer any questions or concerns wasn't really a problem. And what, what, was, the, uh, what was the experience like for them? What kind of access did they have uh, as far as being with family members and with uh, a person who's in hospice? Um, well, they go through a training um, with me. It's a six-hour training. Um, after they go through a training, um, I'm there for basically support to them. I take them on their patient introduction, um, where usually a social worker will say, you know, this patient would really benefit from a weekly visitor. And um, then I take them into a nursing home, maybe the patient's home, and um, just introduce them, kind of tell them a little bit about the patient, make sure that they're getting along well, and then I am, you know, there for them as support, make sure things are going well, there's any concerns that they're taking care of, those types of things. And then really, um, if family comes in while they're visiting, they're allowed to get to know the family. Um, it's just kind of up to them, you know, when that time comes, if they're comfortable with that or not. Mm -hmm. And what is the commitment that your students had when you were uh, setting this up? Uh, how many weeks were they involved in this program? We, uh, it was a, it's a semester long project for them, so we require as part of the project just a minimum of eight hours to do the uh, service. And uh, I know a lot of kids had to get involved with the training process first, so I think they wanted to get started pretty quickly. Uh, but I think they really buy into that, that personal interaction that they have with the uh, patients there, so I think it's a huge part for them. And I know a lot of them are going to continue on. Mm -hmm. for a longer time you know school is out we're already done we got done early <laughs> but a lot of them are going to continue yeah i service. can't believe it's already uh you know summertime yeah, yeah, are you yeah. are you out of school now yes yeah. oh Friday. Yeah. Friday well day. well kudos to you you are <laughs> excellent educators you brought some students with you today that's fantastic you know most students once uh, summer hits they're gone you know <laughs> but not for not for ryan and sydney they're good teachers and they got students here and that's fantastic but you you talked about your training uh, six hours of training. Uh, was that over and above? So they had to do six hours and then eight hours of service? That, I think this was, I mean, with the six hours of training and then above and beyond, I think this was a huge uh, challenge for them. I think they definitely went above and beyond the we, requirements. We told them they could use their six hours of training toward their yeah. eight total hours, yeah. but it didn't even matter to them. You know, they did six hour, or the six hours of training and mm -hmm. then they went forth and did all of it, like looking at, I remember Erin's, they had to do a portfolio at the end of it, and looking at Erin's hours and yeah. her journal entries that she was writing about her visits. It was incredible. It was overwhelming. I gave it to Ryan. I was like, you yeah. can't read this one. It's it was amazing how they got so into it beyond. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, just getting a grade and getting a minimum number of hours. They were really mm -hmm. investing in it. 
Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So you could you could see that uh, they were making that commitment and going back and forth and, yes. and continuing on with Absolutely. this process. Mm -hmm. And how did that work? Was that six hour training in one session or was it over a period of weeks? Do the kids do this during the school day? Did they have to leave campus to get to your office? How did you how did you do this? Um, actually, we come to them. Um, we um, set up a time during the week um, after school hours, and I would come and train them, usually for about two hours a time. And so I met with them about three times, um, just making sure they got through all the training. And then again, each with each one of them individually to do the patient visit as well. So had a lot of meetings with them just to make sure everything was going well for them. Okay, and then their actual visits were, were outside of class? Yeah, mm -hmm. this is all outside the classroom, so it's kind of holding them accountable to uh, making that commitment. So they did a great job with it. I mean, it's yeah. a lot to take on school it, it is, and yeah. then work and sports and clubs and all that so it, it absolutely is yeah. when you think about kids who might have a after-school job oh, and you know or they're or they've mm -hmm. got a commitment for you know a, a coach or mm -hmm. another another activity that they're in that really can be quite an undertaking because then they of course have to get themselves to a nursing home or to absolutely. a home as you're gonna see both our students here today are both very involved with other things work and clubs and um, music so they you know, they had a lot already going and they took this on very well. And how many students, you said you have expectations of about 150 kids that you'll have next year. Yeah. Yep. You have several different opportunities for these kids. It's not just hospice. No, we provide a, we provide a kind of a packet of opportunities and contacts and they're kind of free to choose what they want to do. Mm -hmm. We just kind of provide a starting line for them. So there's other organizations like Hassett House. Habitat for Humanity, uh, the Adopt Pet Shelters, and so it's a wide range of opportunities for them. And uh, so they, they're kind of a, just a starting point for them, but they can pretty much get into, get involved with whatever they want to do, whatever they're passionate about, so. And of course, all of them eight hours at minimum mm -hmm. is what you're expecting. Yeah. So in this case, these kids did training for six of their eight yeah. hours, and yeah. then they were driven to do more yeah. and above. Absolutely. Whereas yeah. if they were doing something else, like going to, uh, you know, uh, take care of dogs at a mm -hmm. pet shelter mm -hmm. or something, they may do, do the minimum or they may right, do more. Right. It's every student I'm sure you've seen a different experience with every student that you right. have yeah. with what they bring back in their portfolio. Right. Yeah. I'd say more often than not that we had kids that I think surprised themselves with how yeah. we had a lot of kids say I wanted to go back over the summer and keep yep. volunteering. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that they do. Well, I think it's great because I can see when these kids bring back their projects, I'm sure you gave them some sharing time. They really do get to learn an awful lot about the oh, world. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they're seeing all these different opportunities to serve and all these other needs that maybe uh, ha they had never considered and yeah. you're opening yeah. their eyes to all these needs yeah. in society. Yes. Big part of the learning process. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of seeing what else is out there, you know, all the different situations and perspectives on it. So they get a lot out of it. They, they are right. kind of shied away at first from wanting to do it, but then a lot, I was surprised to see how many had never done any community service ever. And uh, just kind of the, the transition uh, from the beginning to the end, how much that impacted them. It's been phenomenal. So and breaking in their own like kind of preconceived notions. We had a lot of kids that went to Hesed House and they were they said they really enjoyed getting to know the people, you mm -hmm. know, the guests at Hesed House, the homeless shelter in Aurora. Mm -hmm. They said they really are just like anyone else out there. Yep. So it was good that they kind of came out of their you know, the bubble that we're all in for a while. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fantastic. You know, uh, this is what we want to hear. We want to hear that our kids are learning in school, that they've got great teachers and great role models, and, and my congratulations to the administration and, of West Aurora High School. you got some great teachers here. It's really nice to have Sydney uh, Newkirch, Let's see if I can get your name right, <laughs> Sydney Newkirch and Ryan Sladek, both here from uh, Social Studies mm. Department uh, Sociology class at West Aurora High School, and now you get to enjoy your summer months. Are you going to be doing more <laughs> classes? Are you going to be learning more? Or? Yeah, we're, we're actually both involved in a master's program, and then uh, I'm sure we'll do a little bit of traveling here. So, yeah. All right, sounds great. Well, we're going to say goodbye to, to Ryan and Sydney. We're going to hang on to Nicole, though, because we're going to take a quick break and come back with Kirsten Bergeron and Aaron Kennedy. And they're going to tell you a little bit about their experience working with uh, people in hospice, meeting family members and taking care of people and just being companions. So don't go away. The best part of the show is coming up right after this. Real? Only a few dollars. Oh, yeah. 
a few dollars. Only a few dollars. It's not only a few dollars. Counterfeit goods are often tied to violence and crimes, including child labor, drugs, and gangs. You have the power to stop them. Know the real cost. Don't buy counterfeits. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. I thought a drink would magically solve all my problems. I thought it would give me courage. I thought I was only hurting myself. If alcohol has lost its magic for you and you can't stop drinking, I took action and my life has changed. Now I have friends that accept me for me. I've stopped hurting the people that I love. You'll find us in the phone book, your local newspaper, or on the web. Alcoholics Anonymous. Welcome back. In the first half of our show, we were talking today with, with Sydney Newkirch and Ryan Slydeck. They're both uh, teachers at West Aurora High School and uh, having an interesting collaborative uh, project going with Passages Hospice. And uh, with us is Nicole Brokaw. She's the Volunteer Service Information Coordinator. She's been training students on how to work with hospice uh, patients and family members. And now joining us is Kirsten Berggren and Erin Kennedy. And Kirsten, thank you. Erin, thank you for being here. It's great to have you girls here. Um, I understand that, Erin, you are now a graduate. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so this was your graduation weekend? No, last weekend. Last weekend. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have finished a uh, career at West Aurora High School. Now where do you go from here? Northern Illinois University for nursing. For nursing. Well, this was a nice fit for you then. Yeah. Well, well, well good for you. You've got your classes all set. And where are you going to be uh, yep. uh, staying? Are you going to be in the dorms? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, good for you. And then um, Aaron, uh, no, you're Aaron. <laughs> Kirsten. <laughs> Kirsten, tell me a little bit about yourself. You are a senior now, right? Um, yeah. I'm actually graduating this summer and I'll be heading off to college next fall. Okay. So you're going to be on your way too. Where are you going to go to school? Augustana. Oh, out yeah. in the Quad Cities. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful campus. Yeah. Okay, and what are you going to be studying? Um, I'm hoping to study sociology, but I don't have to declare my major my first year, so I have some time to think about it. Okay, and what was it that brought both of you to this class, um, and what was it that made you decide that you wanted to go into hospice? Well, um, going into nursing, I thought that hospice would be a good visit for me, but um, just going into the class, Really, I just saw it on our curriculum and I thought, wow, it looks kind of interesting. I might try and take it as an elective. I have an extra spot in my schedule. Mm -hmm. Just go for it. And Erin, uh, your teachers were talking about the portfolios. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what did you do in your portfolio? How many hours did you clock? I Any really idea? Know how many hours? <laughs> <laughs> more than eight. <laughs> more, definitely more than you, more than the minimum required yes. for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And what was it, uh, Kirsten, that brought you to um, this project? I think I did the class because a World Cultures teacher had recommended it. And then the project, I'm really not sure. Like they said, we got a big packet, and then we, we could have gone beyond the packet and chosen something like at a church or a thrift store or something. But 
I just saw it and I kind of knew what it was because I'm familiar with nursing homes and everything so I thought it would be a good fit for myself. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you what your experience was like. Were you actually going into a nursing home? Yeah. Both of you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Where did you go? What, what um, nursing home? I was at the Aurora Rehabilitation Center for a little bit and then I was at the Geneva Rehabilitation Center. Now, so you went to do two different centers. How many people did you actually? Two. Two. Um, my first patient didn't really work out. She was sleeping a lot, so I didn't have a lot of time that we were working on the same schedule. And so I got reassigned a new patient that at the Geneva Rehabilitation Center, and it worked out. Okay, so you had more time with that mm -hmm. with that person. Yeah. And this was a lady. Yes. Okay. What was her name? Her name was Celeste. Celeste. Okay. What did What did you and Celeste talk about? What um, did you do? Mostly, we would watch like the news, and that was fun because I never watched the news. Um, she didn't really want to do crafts or play games. Whenever I said like, "Oh, you want to read a book together? Let's do this." No, no, let's just talk. And so we would talk about her Italian background or growing up. And on our last visit, she told me she was getting married soon, and it was Aww. fun. It was great. We just talked a lot. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. And and. Erin, tell me about uh, what was your experience like? Where were you going? Were you going to a nursing home or to someone's yes, home? Yes, I was at Lakewood Nursing Home and Rehabilitation Center okay. in Plainfield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, and did you have one patient there? Yes, I've been with the same patient for about three and a half months now. So. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And is, is it too uh, personal to ask uh, what, that, what that experience is like with that patient? Does she have a, what what is her condition? Can you say whether she has Alzheimer's or you can say that? Yes, she's had a stroke. She had a stroke. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So did you get to uh, that? That's that could be almost anything. That could be loss of you know uh, sensation on one side of your body. It can be loss of a variety of different functions. What was that like? Could she talk with you? Did oh, you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mostly when I go and visit her, we just have conversation um, and, you know, just sometimes when she's sleeping, I'll sit by the side of her bed and sometimes she'll wake up and I'll, you know, get to talk to her for a little bit. And so. Do you feel like you've become good friends? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we've grown, grown pretty close over the past three months. And did you have a chance to meet family members when you were, when you were visiting with her? No, I don't. Um, my patient her family doesn't visit too often, so it's kind of nice to be able to feel like you're making a difference. Yeah, so. absolutely, absolutely. Did you meet any family members when you were with Celeste? I actually didn't. Um, the last day I went to visit, family was actually there. I probably went about it a little the wrong way, but I, anytime I'd been there to visit before, I've never bumped into family, so I was just, I should probably just come back tomorrow, and so I didn't actually meet them. Oh, okay. That's okay, though. Mm -hmm. uh, you were very respectful to them yeah. and gave them their space. And they, you know, you see so many different people when you have a family member in a nursing home and you pe people coming in and out. And I know that you wonder about the relationship that yeah. your loved one might have. Um, I, I lost my mother a year and a half ago, uh, and she was in hospice. So I, I know what that feels like from a family point of view. But I know that my mother made so many friends when she was, you know, in the nursing home. And it was such a, such a joy to have all those friends in her life. That's the way I looked at it. Yeah. So I'm sure that they were not at all offended to mm -hmm. have you there. But, but I know you probably can, you, when you watch these young girls, I'm sure that you feel the same thing as a granddaughter. And you relive those moments in your own life, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, we actually, even with my grandmother, she had a volunteer that was visiting her as well. Um, while she was going through hospice. So it was just nice. Um, takes a little bit of the burden off of caregivers, you know. Mm -hmm. They have time to go out and take care of different things that maybe they didn't have time to before because they know somebody's spending time you know, and, with their family member. And Nicole, so many of these people don't have as much attention as, as we all really wish they would have. Right. So how important is it for somebody like Erin to go and be there when family's not? It's so important. Um, you know, they're going through so much. They don't have anybody there as a support system for them, somebody spending time with them. I mean, even if somebody just goes to spend time with them, to read to them, to see how their day is going, it makes such a difference. And they really um, start to look forward to that visit. 
you know, it's something that really matters to them. You know, at the end of the day, they can look back and say, I have somebody who really, you know, genuinely is available to me to spend time with me. Mm -hmm. I want, I know we only have a few more minutes in the program and it goes so quickly, but I want to ask you if there were any surprises that, you know, something that you didn't expect to happen uh, from your experience, and if there was maybe a favorite part, and maybe a funny story, uh, <laughs> something that you want to share with us about your experience. Um, well, I just didn't realize that I would become as close to my patient as I am over the past three and a half months. You really get to know the patient, and I try and usually visit for about an hour a week, so, and you get to know a person pretty well. Are that. you still visiting with her? Yes. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. That's wonderful. And, that, and how far of a drive is that for you? It's about 20 minutes. So it's really, you know, a sacrifice on your part. You're spending at least two hours in that any, every time you go uh, because you have to travel. And I know you have a lot of thoughts when you're going there because you don't know what you're going to see, mm -hmm. whether or not that's going to be a good day or a bad day. Uh, but it's wonderful that you keep going. Yeah. That, that's really wonderful. Um, I actually haven't got a lot of surprises or stories. Both of my patients, I wasn't with them for too long. For my first patient was just about three weeks of trying to work on the same schedule. My second patient was about three weeks of visiting and she passed away. Mm -hmm. So And so that's part of your portfolio too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And I think that's something that's really telling is that it's not always easy. It's not always, you know, uh, it's it's not something that's just going to be you know nice visit all the time. Uh, yours is probably a very real. Well, I mean, they were still when you they were still great. It. I mean, um, and I mean, getting into the program, you know, the ending result of a lot of things, just that you're going to make an impact during it. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling this is going to be a memory that's going <laughs> to be with you forever. Definitely, mm -hmm. forever and ever. So in some way, Celeste is, you know, always going to be part of your yeah. life. You know, you're, and I didn't even ask her name. What's the name of the lady that you're visiting? Her name is Doris. Doris. Mm -hmm. So Doris and Celeste will definitely be part of you as you mm -hmm. grow up. And, and maybe they've taught you something about life or, I don't know, have you gotten a good <laughs> recipe out of them yet? <laughs> no. No, not yet? Okay. <laughs> I think in general, out of, like, just the program, I've just... I mean, going into this, I really thought that, well, why don't these people have a lot of people with them all the time? And it's just I've realized that people have to live their day-to-day -day lives, and people like us can really help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's a lot of hours in the day and, and a lot of people working hard. And so mm -hmm. uh, when you're a family member, I know you're really hoping that your, your loved one is being loved yeah. when you're not there, when you're at work. That somebody's there for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're helping to fill a gap. and, and it's wonderful to meet you, really, truly is, and I'm just so uh, thrilled with what your teachers are doing. I think this is great. Yeah. You know, you, you obviously made the right choice <laughs> taking this class because it's mm -hmm. a life changer, and obviously it's going to help you in your careers to come. Yeah. So. Yes. What was the best thing that you think of this program? And this is the first year for this program, right? Um, this program has kind of, it's grown slowly. It's been with us for a couple of years, but um, as far as full training and everything within the last year, it's definitely... Um, grow and we have about um, we have over a hundred volunteers right now that are visiting our patients and spending time with them statewide so that's pretty exciting um, but then as far as the best thing about volunteering I think a lot of people take you know a lot from their visits um, like you were talking about um, with them asking them if they've learned anything from their patients there's a lot of history behind every patient you know and um, they always have great stories to share and I think a lot of people take that home with them mm -hmm. at the end of the day and it's it's kind of nice to hear those stories once in a while. So. And as a, a volunteer, you know, it's volunteer services information coordinator for passages, you are teaching so many people, so many valuable skills, um, hopefully creating a new generation of more compassionate people mm -hmm. so compliments to you and uh, we are totally out of time I can see <laughs> I want to thank all of all of you for being here and once again uh, you can look up Passages Hospice at PassagesHospice.com and of course you can find uh, the West Aurora High School District at SD129.org and with that I have to say goodbye thank you so much thank you for being here and we'll see you next time on Fox Valley Today.